Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about simple harmonic motion for pendulums. In previous videos, I covered simple harmonic motion for a mass spring system. Now we're going to talk about pendulums. In my opinion, pendulums are going to be easier because it's very similar to simple harmonic motion for a mass spring system, except there's less equations you need to memorize. So first, let me show you what we're talking about here. We're talking about a pendulum, so a little ball on a string swinging back and forth like this. And so there's three quantities we need to know. We need to know T, which is the period, which is to say how long it takes for the pendulum to swing back and forth one time. Then we have frequency F. Frequency is just the reciprocal of period. Remember that equation T equals one over F. And frequency is basically the opposite of period where it's the number of oscillations per second. And then the last quantity we have is omega, which is gonna be our angular frequency. And we know the equation for that is omega is equal to two pi f, or you can write it as two pi divided by t period. So now that we're familiar with those three terms, now let's see how they relate to the pendulum. So first, the period of a pendulum, t, is equal to two pi times the square root of L over G, where L is the length of that pendulum, and G is the acceleration of gravity. It's gonna be 9.8 on Earth, but of course the question could change what planet you're on. And since we have period T, and we have the equation period equals one over frequency, you can actually solve this for frequency, and you get this new equation, F equals one over two pi root G over L. You'd use this equation if you ever wanna solve for frequency, or you can find period and then just take the reciprocal and you'll get your answer that way as well. And then there's one more equation I need to show you. It's if we wanna solve for omega, angular frequency, and I'll just tell you the equation for that. It's root G over L like this. Now, I don't know which of these three are gonna be given on your equation sheet, or maybe you write your own equation sheet and then I'd put all three of these on there. But remember, even if, let's say you're only given the period one, we can find frequency and we can find omega using the other equations that we already know about. And now let's look at some example problems with simple harmonic motion for pendulums. Almost always the questions are gonna look something like this. I have a pendulum swinging back and forth with some length L and we're on Earth, which means the acceleration of gravity is G. I'm gonna tell you the period, the period is equal to T naught. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna ask you, what's the new period if we double the length of the pendulum? So I usually call these comparison problems. It's because you're comparing the original scenario to a new scenario where we double the length. To do that, I usually write the equation twice. What equation? Well, the equation for simple harmonic motion of a pendulum in this case two pi root L over G. And remember, this is T naught, this is my original. If I want, I can plug in capital L for length, because that's why I said the length was, capital L. If I give you numbers, you can actually plug in numbers, but this is fine. Then I want to find the new period, which I'll call T new, and that's going to be two pi root two L over G, because remember, we doubled the length. Now from here, the goal is to isolate this part and write everything else off to the side. In other words, the only thing that's new here is this two under the square root. So I'm gonna write that off to the side like this, and then in front of it, the same original two pi root L over G. So in other words, I just pulled the root two off to the side. The reason why I did that is because this quantity is equal to T naught, it's my original. And so that means my new period is equal to T naught, the original, times the square root of two, which you can plug in a calculator, it's about 1.4, meaning the period got longer. With a longer pendulum, it takes longer to swing back and forth. So hopefully that made sense to you. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments below. But now we still got two more questions to look at. Next is the exact same example. I wanna find T new, the new period, if we double the mass this time. So here's what I'm gonna tell you. First, write, T naught equals two pi root L over G, just like we did before. And now for T nu with double the mass, 
you'll notice that mass doesn't even show up in this equation, which means it stayed the same. The period did not change. The new period is still equal to the original. And that's the correct answer. As a matter of fact, there's a couple things that you can change about this pendulum and it doesn't change the period at all. The most interesting one in my opinion is that you can pull the pendulum back twice as far as before and it will still complete an oscillation back and forth in the same amount of time. So you can change the mass, you can change the release angle, but if you change the length of your pendulum or what planet you're on, the acceleration of gravity, that is going to change your period. And so now I've got one more for you. This time I'm gonna make it slightly different. So originally, this pendulum is going to have a length of four meters and the acceleration of gravity is still 9.8. And now we're going to change these values. We're going to now use a string that's one fourth as long as before, one meter, and we're going to move to a planet that has three times the acceleration of gravity. So three times 9.8. And my question for you is, if the original frequency we call f, and the new frequency we call f prime, I want you to find for me f prime divided by f. So here's what we're gonna do for this one. First, I gotta find f and f prime. If you forget the equation, f equals one over two pi root g over l. The other way you can remember this is just remembering the period equation two pi root L over G, and then taking the reciprocal of that, and that's you get to F here. But assuming we already have this equation, it's very simple, F is equal to one over two pi times, I'm just gonna write G, I don't need to write 9.8, divided by length was four originally. And then for F prime, my new one, it's gonna be one over two pi times the square root of now three G, and length is now one. So here's my equation for f prime. Now all I gotta do is write f prime over f and fill in what I just wrote. So the numerator, it's gonna be one over two pi root three g over one divided by one over two pi root g over four. And now the question is, I gotta simplify this. How do I do it? First, I want you to pay attention. The one over two pi's do cancel, which is nice. You could even say the g's cancel and so right now we're left with just root three in the numerator and root one fourth in the denominator. Maybe you're confused what to do from here because this is a complex fraction, but I'll tell you, whenever you have a complex fraction, all you gotta do is multiply by the reciprocal, root four over one, like that. And we know the square root of four is two, so it looks like we'll get a final answer of two root three. That is my value of f prime over f. And what this basically means is since this number is greater than one, two root three is greater than one, it means that f prime, the new frequency, is gonna be higher, meaning that it's swinging faster, if you wanna think of it like that. And there's no units for this because f prime over f, the units cancel, so it's just two root three. And so that's all the examples I wanted to show you today on simple harmonic motion for pendulums. And the last thing I gotta say is that I would be remiss if I did not mention a follow-up video you should definitely watch after this. And that is Walter Lewin's last lecture for the love of physics. I'll include a link in the description below. It's a long video, but basically he does everything that I just showed you for a pendulum, except he does it in real life. And he really gets into it, so it's fun to watch. But that's it for me. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, and bye-bye.